What's up, everybody? Did anything happen today that we need to talk about? Anything at all? My voice is kind of hoarse because I was out coaching a, uh, our first travel baseball practice today. Ryan Talbot's voice is gone. I'm going to the bullpen, and I'm bringing in my good friend. Straight uh, heat. I, I throw straight heat out of the pen, just so you know. There'll be no change up. It's all heat. When you drink coffee it. at 9 p.m., you, you throw heat. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is my uh, our fearless fearless leader on Buffalo Kickoff Live. Uh, you guys watch can watch it every uh, game day at 11 a.m. on CBS, uh, whatever affiliate you are in Buffalo or, uh, or in New York State, and then also first half hours usually online. Josh Reed, sports director, WIVB. What is up, buddy? Hey, my man. How are you? you you're you're battling the sickness that I had. Legit. A week and a half ago, and it just your voice starts to go. Your your voice just doesn't feel as strong as it should, right? right? That's that's what I was dealing with, where I felt like I just didn't have that oomph that you need. No, I get the that, and back. <laughs> and I think that might be what Ryan's dealing with. My voice is a little bit hoarse because I was screaming at seven year olds for two well, hours. Well, yeah, so that's calm. It, it is what that's it is. You get up screaming at seven year olds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so. Do you know that you can enter for a chance to win $1 million right now? Each week, Kings Hawaiian is pitting two cities sliders against each other in the ultimate showdown, and you get to help decide the winner. Vote weekly for your favorite regional slider for a chance to win all season long and earn entries toward the $1 million prize. Explore the interactive stadium to play games, get recipes, share photos, and more. Visit topsmarkets.com slash red zone to enter. All right, Josh, Josh Reed, let's start here. All day long, Bills fans were panicking as you know obviously christian mccaffrey was added uh to the 49ers last week and there was reports out that the bills had made a call on him there was a report on sunday that the bills made a call on uh to the saints about alvin kamara and then you wake up today you start going through your day as if it's going to be a normal day as a bills fan and the miami dolphins trade for a premier pass rusher in bradley chubb and you're like all right, Brandon Bean, get to work. Well, he did get to work at, you know, right before the deadline. He had Naheem Hines, uh, running back out of uh, from the Indianapolis Colts, Dean Marlowe, depth safety, back in the in the mix. But you had a great tweet uh, a little while ago, and you basically were like, "Hey, everybody, relax. Tell me a little bit about what what, what you meant by that." Yeah, just here's the thing: everybody else is playing catch up at this point. I mean, the Bills roster, in my opinion, from top to bottom is the best in the NFL. Everybody else is trying to catch what the Bills have done, what the Bills have built. The Bills are still the favorite. Even after all of this, all, all the trade deadline stuff, I I didn't look, but I'm pretty sure the Bills are still the Vegas' favorite to win the Super Bowl. So as as much as, you know, the, the sky is falling, it may feel like it's falling, It's it's not falling. Look, the Bills didn't have to add a pass rusher at the trade deadline like the Dolphins because they did it in the offseason. Mm -hmm. That's why Vaughn Miller is already wearing 40 for the Bills. Like, it's just, look, I, I get it. I, every fan base thinks that their team needs to go out and add that guy. Well, there's a lot of things that come into play. First of all, you have to find a trade partner, you know, you, you, and you have to have the assets that you're willing to give up to get a guy that you want. And then – Last but definitely not least, you have to have it has to fit in the salary cap. Mm -hmm. Like that, the, all those things have to work together in order to make it happen. And I, I am not look. I think that Hines is an upgrade from Moss. I mean, look, Moss hasn't even been active. I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it. If Sunday he's active, he's already a step ahead of Moss. Look, <laughs> I, there there have been many, many, many draft picks where I have been on the wrong side of. I was not on the wrong side of Zach Moss. I just didn't. I When he said he was going to leave his business card on the chest of NFL players, I thought, yeah, we'll see. It's a little different sport in the NFL than it was in college at Utah, right? Yeah. He, you, yeah. yeah. Utah, a little yeah. different. A little different. Um, and and maybe, maybe he turns into something with the Colts. I doubt it. So I think Hines is an upgrade there. And you mentioned Dean Marlowe. Um, I think that's a good depth piece. He obviously knows Sean and Leslie's defense as well as anybody. Um, and, you know, we'll see what, what's up with Jordan Poyer's elbow injury. Hopefully that's not something that keeps him out long. But, you know, you need some somebody, especially a veteran presence behind those two young guys. 
Yeah, and I I asked Ken Dorsey yesterday, and poor poor Ken, just right right ahead of the the trade deadline, kind of having to ask be asked about the Zach Moss situation, and you know he's not the general manager, he's not even the head coach, so I kind of get the answer. You know, he said we all love Zach Moss, and I do think that the Bills love Zach Moss, but I think they were in a situation that wasn't conducive to the team or the player because I think Zach Moss never really had an opportunity. This was Devin Singletary's job throughout his entire tenure here. I agree with you. I don't think Zach Moss ever did anything that really forced the Bills' hand to give him more action, more more time out there. But at the same time, he was always in a very crowded backfield. You know, they go out and they spend a second-round draft pick on James Cook, and you kind of see the writing on the wall. And I, I think there was a combination with Moss of lack of production combined with kind of odd behavior, social media behavior at times. He obviously was inactive and had the tweet that, you know, we all retweeted and he immediately deleted it. And, you know, over the course of his career, I mean, he's a rookie. He starts his own podcast where he's kind of like doing all this other stuff. He started his own clothing line. It's like, listen, I get some of that stuff with Jordan Poyer, with Von Miller, with Josh Reed. Or with Josh Reed. You and Josh yeah. Reed. Establish Josh yourself. Allen. Yeah, exactly. Establish I mean, like, and – on top of all that, he wasn't a first round pick. Like it's right. isn't like you're a third round pick. Let's pump the brakes. Let's figure out how to play in the NFL first. Be active on game day first, then come out with your own shoes. I don't know. Right. I mean, it's just a thought. I mean, and that's some priorities are a little different than, than others, and and that's fine. And and maybe you know. We were all kind of like when they drafted him, it was like, oh, Devin Singletary, maybe he's feeling threatened by this. Devin Singletary probably met him. We've seen how hard Devin Singletary works. We've heard his teammates praise him and how hard he works. I'm sure Devin Singletary, he obviously never said this to us, but I'm sure he didn't feel threatened at all. He probably saw that maybe the priorities aren't what his are, and he probably thought, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm going to be okay. And we've seen as many times as we've all tried to say, the Bills have got to figure the running back thing out. They've got to move on from Singletary. It, he just keeps popping back up, right? He's not, he hasn't gone anywhere, and quite frankly, he's having a decent season. I mean, you look at his numbers in the eyeball test even. You know, he, he's he he's been fine. They, they don't need Ladanian Tomlinson. They don't need a guy that's going to, back in the day, run for 1,800 yards. They, they just don't need that. Mm-hmm. You know, Naeem Hines, you look at him and his role and you kind of just think about what the Bills have been trying to do since March. And obviously the J.D. McKissick deal was highly publicized. We talked a lot about it. It fell through. He decided to go back to Washington. They draft James Cook. It's kind of been a slow start, five catches through seven games. And I think what they do, what they actually end up landing on is by removing Zach Moss from the whole mix and maybe setting things up for the future, maybe down the road for this to be James Cook, but giving him a little bit of a, all right, take a breather. Okay. You had a really good game last week. Now you insert Naheem Hines into this offense. And I think it's an upgrade on any option that they could have had there. I think he's better than McKissick. You know, you look at his, you know, his 235 uh, receptions in a little bit over four seasons, 17 career touchdowns. He's been more consistent in that part of the game. And now you can get really creative potentially with how you use Cook, but how you also use Hines in this offense for Ken Dorsey. Yeah, the the, the number that I liked, um, 43 touches, 224 yards receiving and rushing. So this is about, two, about five and a half yards per touch. That's great. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's two touches, first down. And you know, look at it that way. Um, the, the simplistic way of looking at it. Um, I'm with you. I, I think that they will get out of him what they need. And we'll see how that – you want to be careful not to stunt the growth of Cook, right? Because he's the young guy. And quite frankly, he's made a few plays the last couple of weeks where you've gone, ah, all right, this is what you want to see. And now it's like, uh, you're right, as far as taking a step back and getting a little bit of a breather, I think that's good for rookies at times. But you also want to make sure you don't you don't stunt his growth. I, the Bills have never shown to be an organization since Sean and Brandon got there. that they That's not really anything you have to worry about. I just also think it's a little bit of, I mean, Naeem Hines has kind of been the guy when Jonathan Taylor gets dinged, right? Since Jonathan mm-hmm. Taylor got to Indy. So... I think it's also a little bit of insurance in case of Singletary happens to get dinged and, and misses a game or misses two games. I mean, it 
if if he he happened to miss a game here in the next couple of weeks because of injury, and you were looking at Zach Moss and Cook, that's I don't know how much confidence that gives anybody in the fan base. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I now I think with some sort of combination of, of Cook and Hines, I think you feel a little bit better about how, being able to roll with those, with that duo. Um, yeah, so I, I do. I think Brandon has done a good job of adding another depth piece. I know that the fans wanted to splash like the Miami Dolphins did, but just it wasn't going to happen. Those splash came in 2020, in March 2020 and March 2022. Yeah. And on, honestly, there's not a player that's been added in the division outside of, I'd say, maybe like a Matthew Judon. I think he's on the level of a Von Miller sure. signing, maybe not the same credentials, but the kind of impact on a, on a team that's had the impact that either of those two guys have had. And here's the thing too. Uh, and we, we can kind of side How about both here. being from the Broncos. How about Von <laughs> Miller and Chubb right? both being from the Broncos, both right. being edge rushers and both landing in the division. Right. I, I mean, as you were talking, I just kind of pieced that together. Like the Broncos just handing out edge rushers. Here you go. Yeah. And they're, and they're okay. We with don't, it, we don't. it seems. It, it, they seem to be able to kind of – they got this young kid, Baron Browning, who's who seems to be really coming into his own. They have Randy Gregory once he gets back from injury. They they seem to be deep, and obviously in Denver, the problem is not on the defensive side of the ball. And mm-hmm. I think the True. interesting thing about Chubb to me, and we could sidestep here and talk about this and how this changes the complexion of not only the division potentially but the, the conference, is that Chubb has been really inconsistent, and a, and a big reason for the inconsistency has been the injury problems. And, mm-hmm. you know, I saw a tweet coming from, um, I think it was Joe Banner, the former uh, GM for the Eagles, and he said, listen, it's great to go out and get Bradley Chubb, but now the two most important players to the Miami Dolphins seasons, can you trust either of them to stay he- healthy? Tua Tagovailoa every year has dealt with something going back to college even. And so now you're, you're putting all of that uh, on the table. And even when they have been healthy Tua and, and Bradley Chubb, it's been inconsistent as good of a year as Tua is having so far in 2022. And here's another part of that too, that I want to add in there as an, as a little bit of a asterisk. It's still very early in the process of, teams and around the league adjusting to Tua, Tyree Kill, and Jalen Waddle. I think with the success that they're having, it's all well and good now, but that could very much change in December and January when teams have more tape, more time to prepare, more ideas, and it gets colder. Yeah, and I mean, let's face it, in that Bills loss, they didn't exactly light them on fire, right? Mm-hmm. They, the Bills defense, and if anybody is going to figure out a blueprint of slowing them down, I personally would put my money on Sean and Leslie. I just, and getting Tredavious White back, you know, let's just say, assume that he's back in the lineup, especially by the time they meet up with the Dolphins the second time around. Um, Yeah, I'm probably going to go ahead and and take the Bills finding a way to slow down the Dolphins. Although, to your point, two has been great. Mm -hmm. He has been. I mean, all we can go off of is what we've seen him do with Tyree Kill and Waddle. Look, who knows what – I mean, look, I, I think Josh Allen is still going to be a good quarterback without Diggs. But adding Diggs, let's face it, that, that makes a hell of a difference. I mean, you give Josh Allen a guy like that, much like – look, I mean, Waddle and Hill. It's an excess of, you know, treasures to have on the outside. Um, but, yeah, you got to give two it a lot of credit because I didn't – I thought he was done. I thought there's no way this guy's going to figure it out. And – he has. Now, I will say this. I also didn't think that this guy's never should be in the NFL at all. I wasn't that far out on the limb, but I just didn't think he was a top 20 quarterback in the NFL. And it looks like he could be a top 12. And he's played really well. Mm-hmm. Let's get some uh, some fan uh, reaction here. Uh, question from Connor. Could the Bills draft a more traditional running back in the draft? Uh, he thinks Hines' contract – uh, they probably don't re-sign Devin Singletary. And then our good friend Scott, uh, he had a good comment here. I will say that I think this trade secures Singletary's 2023 fate, meaning that you know, Hines obviously under contract for two more seasons with base salaries of 445 and 514 in 2024, believes uh, uh, Singletary walks next year. And I want to get your thoughts on that, but I, I think it's very important to remember I don't think the Bills give up Moss and a draft pick with the idea that they move on from Hines. 
But if it doesn't work out, those two years are not guaranteed. So this is this could very well be a rental or a restructure after the season if maybe it doesn't go the way that you want. And I know so many people are so quick to move on from Singletary. And I know that that's probably the most likely scenario because really in this offense, you know, I think even Devin Singletary's camp, you know, we, Ryan and I have talked about it many times. I think they probably feel like they could be you know, putting up bigger numbers with a bigger role in an offense that's more predicated on running. So maybe just from their perspective, it makes more sense to kind of go out and see what's out there. So it's probably likely. And you draft James Cook in the second round, he's probably the future. And Hines kind of can mix into that pretty nicely at this point. Don't forget yeah. that Duke Johnson still on the sure. practice squad that I think in, in a pinch, he could probably participate as well and do, do well in this offense. Yeah, I don't think you want him in the AFC Championship game, but that's sure, fair. I'm with you. In a pinch, sometime in, you know, early December or whatever. And it, it it's funny that you bring up that Singletary's guys think that he can put up bigger numbers in other offenses with a bigger role. Of course they do. Of course they think that. That's what they're supposed to think. That's what they're supposed to say. I'll also, add, I'd like to add this as a counter argument. He's not going to have better passing games as far as he's never going to be less of a focal point of a defense. Right. Because there isn't one week in his NFL career where he has gone into game week and the other team's defense has said, got to stop Singletary. Right. Got to find a way. It just hasn't happened because as long as he's in the backfield with 17, that's just, and that's not just him. That's any running back. It doesn't matter. And I, you know, I I like the thought of, you know, do you, you you know, the one, the one, uh, the one viewer uh, bringing up the thought that drafting maybe a more traditional type of running back. I, there's just – I'm assuming that means more of like the three down running back, mm-hmm. right? There's just not very many of those anymore. There's just not. Mm-hmm. There's, there's there maybe four or five Christian McCaffreys, right? Jonathan Taylors. There's just not that many. Um, I just – and we've seen so far, like, Brandon Bean and this organization just doesn't put a ton of stock in needing that bell cow – running back now they've also have had to watch josh allen carry the ball and carry the load and that part of the offense more than they probably wanted to right i i don't think they want him as their leading rusher because long term that's not great look january if he has to run for 110 yards in order for them to win i think the bills would go that's fine Mm -hmm. i don't think they want him doing it in september and october um so I, I don't know. I don't think you'll see that traditional three down back. I don't think the Bills, because if you're going to do that, it's almost got to be bottom of the first round type talent, you know, to be a three down back. And I, I just don't think the Bills are in the market for that. But it's going to be interesting to see how the Heinz thing plays out after this season, because I read somewhere you may you, you may have seen this and you maybe you remember the particulars of it that I don't think his dead cap hit is much i i don't think there's a lot of dead cap if if they move on from Hines after this season um, zero zero dead yeah. cap so i mean you're you know as far as the short-term rental thing goes that kind of would play to that but you gave up moss and you gave up a draft pick you know i don't think you just that's a that's a that that's the definition of a rental mm-hmm um, Ron Beck asks, could Hines take over for McKenzie in the slot? And I've seen kind of like a lot of this. And I think the best path to that was Cook. And that hasn't materialized in the slightest. I think I've seen him run to my, like just thinking back to the seven games, one one snap out of the slot. And I think Joe DiBiase from WGR put it out that I think it's like 13% of Heinz's snaps of his career have come out of the slot. So it's not something he's done a lot. The Bills traditionally want guys that are literally working exclusively out of the slot doing that. Like I think the the likelihood, there's probably a more a greater likelihood that Khalil Shakir maybe like rises in terms of the slot snap share uh, than it does going to a running back in that spot. Yeah, or or Odell Beckham Jr. Mm. Ah, that'll get the Bills fans fired up. That's yes. a name they want to hear. We were going to get right? to that, but hey, let's yeah. not bury the lead. Let's get no. to it now. <laughs> the to, to backtrack though, one second uh, on the the Cook thing because I kind of fell prisoner of the moment too when they took him and thinking, oh, that's a little 
piece they can move around the chessboard a little bit, put him in the slot. And, this. and now, in hindsight, you look back and you go, okay, you want to. We always hear how hard it is for a rookie coming into any position to play. Mm-hmm. And now you're going, hey, by the way, running back and <laughs> slot receiver. I mean, you're really putting him in a tough position. And that's why. Sean McDermott and and Ken Dorsey and these guys get paid what they get paid to do, right? Because they were like, we're not going to put this kid in the in a position to completely fail at slot mm-hmm. and running back, and we're trying to force feed him two different playbooks. Like, it just so looking back on it, you go, okay, yeah, it was probably probably asking a little too much. Let's face it, to, I mean. If Cook was going to come in and be like a legit contributor from the slot and from the running back spot, why the hell would he have lasted till the Bills got him? Right? Yeah. I mean, right. Wh- why wouldn't every team go- have gone, hey, this guy's the next McCaffrey. We got to jump yeah. on this. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, so I-, I don't know. I, I, you know, they're taking him along slowly. And quite frankly, they should because they can. And they're mm-hmm. sitting here at six and one. And, yeah, we don't know what Shakir is yet. We don't know what the, the only young guys who have contributed are Elam and Benford, and that's because they were forced in, right? W- what would we know about? Think about this: if Tredavious White is healthy coming out of training camp, what do we know about them? Right? No, I right? Think that's a great point. We don't know anything. I mean, we know what we saw at training camp, and maybe the, they got in some snaps late in games and stuff, but. You know, that's the one position where you go, you talk about depth. Holy smokes. I mean, you've got pieces in that back end outside of safety where they're banged up right now. But at cornerback and with, with Taron and and and, and Tredavious coming back, and it, man, they, they've got young depth too. Young, really good players at, at cornerback. But it's going to be a – as long as Tredavious comes back, right, and comes back healthy and is – Let's say he's 98% of what Tredavious was, right? Before the injury. Maybe a blessing in disguise because they know now what they have with Elam. Elam got thrown into the fire. And quite frankly, I think he did pretty well. Uh, Mm -hmm. Bedford, we definitely wouldn't have known what he was going to do, right? He would have been third. He would have been backing up Dane Jackson. like, Mm -hmm. And then maybe not because if Dane goes down, then maybe they throw Elam over there. So I don't know. I just think this has been... Maybe maybe it was a blessing in disguise. You, they, I'm sure everybody wanted Tredavious ready to go right from the jump. But, you know, now if he's fully, fully healthy, which they're not going to play him, you know that, unless he's really ready. So it's, um, yeah, they're, they're in a good spot. We know a little bit about some of the young guys. I'm ready for, you know, I know this is a hot take, but I'm ready for Christmas season. Uh, as soon as Halloween happens, I, t- I turn the calendar to November and it is Christmas music blasting in the vehicle uh, all the time with the kids. They love it. We got all the playlists uh, and tis the season to save on groceries and all of your holiday gifts. Christmas bonus is underway at Tops Friendly Markets. Shop at Tops and save $10 at all of your other favorite stores and restaurants with over 25 gift cards to choose from. There's something for everyone on your list. And don't forget to treat yourself to some extra savings too. save on great gifts like toys and games from GameStop or Toys R Us at Macy's, great family dining at Applebee's or Buffalo Wild Wings, that new big TV that you want from Best Buy, and so much more just by shopping at Tops. For a complete list of available gift card savings, visit Tops Markets slash Christmas bonus. We're going to go go back to the bullpen. Josh, I've been impressed with what you've done. Oh, here he is. You've had a lot of- My heart is nemesis. A lot of of good stuff, a lot of- a lot of really like you know you 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 fooled us. You said you're going to bring heaters. You had a couple curveballs in there. I, I like what you were dealing. Now we're going to bring in Thad Brown. We started at the top of the show, Thad, talking about Ryan being a little bit under the weather. Had to go to the bullpen. So so we're bringing in. Are you lefty? You throw lefty? I uh, know I'm a righty. Uh, all gas, good location. You know, at this point, little Jamie Moyer is what my game my game is. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hope to sneak the 75 mile per hour junk ball high and inside. You know, dotting corners and stuff like that. And then every once in a while, I'm going to take it deep. But, you know, that's how it goes at this point. You ever watch the movie Major League? You remember oh, yeah. That movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, uh, remember the guy who's like, yeah. I'm going to rub a little, a little, a little oh. jalapeno up my nose, get it running. <laughs> yeah. Get a little more break on the curveball. I ain't got an arm like the young guys anymore. None of us do. Maybe Prino a little bit. But, no, I mean, we're all, 
Speak for yourself. I yeah. I was throwing some soft toss going high and tight tonight to the little seven-year-olds out at the uh, sports complex. So, listen, I could probably still hit, I don't know, 58, which for us, that's pretty that's pretty fast. <laughs> well, what's what's this still stuff? As if 58 was good at one point. Like, back Thank in the day, man, I was touching 60, man. No, no one could get me... <laughs> <laughs> Bring in that 60 mile per hour heater, dude. Right, I mean, right. if, if you're gonna give heaters. me at, at least, no, 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 I'm not done with this yet. You're gonna let me finish okay. this, all right? <laughs> if you're gonna go with a number back in the day that I'm still at, at least have it start with a seven, for gosh sakes. I mean, I don't think 58. I ever touched 70. I don't think I ever touched 70. I went to really? the Bison's game and I think I hit 59 once and I was doing cartwheels. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, man, I do cartwheels. My arm was still attached if I hit 59 right now. So, um, Thad Brown, uh, sports director of um, WROC in Rochester. Correct. Um, also a member of the Buffalo Kickoff Live crew. Um, I guess, like, let me get, ask you big picture here. We talked a little bit about the trade so far. We talked about the, you know, the reshaping of the AFC East and the AFC. What stands out to you as like, how you view now Miami and Buffalo after all the events of today. I think there's some talk on Twitter about the Dolphins being the third best team in the AFC and without really like thinking about it and studying it, I, I kind of tend to agree. Um, mm -hmm. And some of it might be, I just watched them play that, that uh, game against the lions and they just went up and down the field offensively in, in a spot where, you know, I've seen Tua have the big comeback against Baltimore. I've seen them have good quarters and good halves. Now, look, D Detroit looks like a, a paper lion slash tiger, whatever you want to call it defensively. They're not very good. But to, to see Tua and that offense just operating effortlessly, I don't care who it was against, I was pretty darn impressed. And coming off a, a weekend where the Bengals looked absolutely terrible against the Browns, no offense, Josh, where, <laughs> where the, the, the Ravens, I still have doubts about what Lamar can be as a quarterback in the postseason. Now, I'm not saying Tua is some great – you know, postseason potential quarterback, but we actually haven't seen that yet. So maybe he is. I mean, there's still that we, we don't know what he and that offense might be. So, you know, the, the Dolphins were desperate for an impact defensive player, and Bradley Chubb is absolutely going to be that, considering that their their uh, bread and butter on defense was the secondary, and they're running out like seventh and eighth string corners and safeties right now. So to add this piece was was a big help to the Dolphins. But you know, then the Bills turned around and you know basically addressed two big needs. Uh, I don't know how big you want to call, you know, reserve safety, but it's a need. And Dean Marlowe is a good guy to, to fill there. And then on top of that, I mean, they've been chasing the Hines running back, the receiver running back, you know, since the J.D. McKissick um, flirting back in the offseason. So to be able to find, you know, yeah, they tried James Cook. Clearly they don't think that's going to work this year. To find the guy that fills that role, you know, the Bills may not have done the Bradley Chubb swing, but, you know, they plugged in holes. They did what they had to do. And, and, this team that was the most complete team in the NFL by far five hours ago got even a little more complete today. Mm -hmm. And I think too, like there could still be another swing coming with, you know, obviously the Odell Beckham jr. You know, saga will continue here and actually the pickup steam. Cause it, you know, a report a couple of weeks ago says he wasn't really considering signing with anybody till after the trade deadline. And you go back and look at the deal that he signed with the Rams last year for one year, 1.25 million with incentives. That's probably what you're looking like. You probably will fit that under the cap. I haven't seen it out there yet. And that's another thing that I, you know, I think is interesting. How much of Heinz's deal Indianapolis picked up in this, in this deal, the, the, the details of that aren't out yet. I can't imagine, you know, the, that Brandon Bean didn't leave himself the kind of room knowing how much Von Miller wants Odell Beckham Jr. here. And also what I think that can mean for just replenishing the ranks. Uh, right, Josh. I mean, is this something now where I don't think it's do or die to get Beckham, but I, I can make an argument that it's just as important for what the Bills want to do in January and February and adding some depth, you know, in case of injury, combined with the fact that you probably don't want him going to another AFC rival team, especially at that number. Yeah, yeah I would start with this. Who do we think is in legit in competition for Beckham? Are the Rams really still in competition with mm. for him? Because let's face it, he's going to want to go to a team that's got a chance to win a ring. Because as much as he he didn't get to he didn't get a chance to finish the Super Bowl, right? I mean, he didn't get a chance to stand up there and hold the Lombardi with his jersey still on and his full pads and score the game winning touchdown. He didn't get a chance to do that. 
So, and he was off to a good start in that game. Um, so, I mean, are the Rams really still in it three and four and just got absolutely torched last weekend? So, I mean, you wonder, you know, I wanted to give two first round picks to the Carolina Panthers for Brian Burns, and they said no. So that tells you how much they they think they're still a pass rusher away, which I think speaks to um, Odell as well. The, the, you talk about Josh was talking about too. You know who's in competition for this? The Chiefs just went out and grabbed a receiver last week with with right. a pretty high asset trade in a third rounder and a sixth rounder for Kadarius Tony. Now Chiefs writers will tell you that they're still potentially in for OBJ, but I don't know if I buy that. You know you don't spend that much on Tony and then turn around and then also add you know OBJ for this year. The one thing I'll say about the Rams is if, if you know Beckham's going to wait three four weeks to sign, if they happen to win three four in a row and they're six and four seven and four. Right. And that division is trash. They look like they got a, you know, at least a, a home game to where the only real competition in the NFC is the I've never been there before Jalen Hurts Eagles. Yeah, then I think the Rams might be in, but we're talking about three or four things that have to happen before the Rams even get in, you know, the same context of what the Bills would be. I'm, I'm with you guys. You know, I think Beckham is going to be in Buffalo, you know, sometime by the start of December. The question to me is not if he signs, the question to me is what does he have? You know, because this is less than 12 months off an ACL. You know, these are not injuries that guys just show up and play the next year and always are just what they were. Like you said, you know, Matt, the Bills don't need desperately some great offensive piece, you know, out of the sky. But if you're going to sign him, you're going to play him. And if you're going to play him, he better be able to be, you know, at least somewhat effective for what you expect OBJ to be. Well, and there and there's your answer to your slot, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you you have – Diggs on the outside and Gabe on the outside and then OBJ working, working in the middle and playing in the slot. And you can mix and match those guys. I know that we've talked before about Diggs playing in the slot a little bit. I we've never really seen it come to fruition, but it, I don't know. Give Josh Allen another guy that can, that can make big plays in the passing game. Once again, it goes back to how much do you really need a running back? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's one of those, as long as Josh is, I mean, once again, you don't want him leading your team in rushing yards every single game. But I mean, if you're up forty-eight nothing, anybody I can go run, lead the team in rushing yards. Well, man, I got a fastball about my my forty times about what Matt's fastball looks like. <laughs> um, do you know Ryan Downs here? He says he misses you, Josh. Yeah, yeah. Ryan and I are buddies from back in uh, back in the Harrisburg days, and nice. he He's- is a huge Bills fan. Nice. He was. I cannot begin to tell you when I got the job in Buffalo, and I, he was, I, I he might have been happier for me than I was. He was like, <laughs> "This is amazing. You're going to cover the Bills," and I'm like, "They haven't been relevant in a while, so we'll see how amazing it is." <laughs> Give me a couple years now. Of course, now things have changed since the Rex Ryan days. But yeah, Ryan and I, we go, we go way back. So that's awesome. Yeah. And he he dropped five dollars to say that. That was a super chat. So he really wanted to make sure that you knew that he was watching, which shout out Ryan. I appreciate, I, you, I appreciate it, Ryan. Yeah. Ryan's good people. He, he did, uh, he had a morning show on the radio and he'd have yeah. me come on every Monday morning. We'd talk about what the Eagles and Steelers and around the league stuff. So it's fun. That's so awesome. Good, good people. Cool. All right. Before I let you guys get out of here, I want to hit on the Marlowe trade briefly. Is this more about depth anyway? Because with Jaquan Johnson and you know, a couple times now, Poyer has been banged up. I mean, I think they they need depth. Period. I mean, Cam Lewis, who's played zero safety in a regular season NFL game, is you know, at, if Poyer can't play this weekend, is your number one safety uh, backup option. So, is this more about depth, or is this maybe a sign that maybe this Poyer injury is a little bit more serious, uh, or could be a little bit more serious? I think it might be a little of both. You know, um, we'll see what where Poirier is at on Wednesday. Um, they didn't put him on IR today, so that mm-hmm. at least I think would tell you pretty certainly that it's not anything more than a three-week injury, if it is even that much. Um, they needed help there, though, and, and I think, you know, Marlowe is a guy you can just plug in, um, you know, put him back there. He knows where to go. He knows what to expect. He knows what Tredavis White on one side is going to talk and how it's going to communicate. He knows what Tremaine Edmonds and Matt Milano, how they're going to communicate. If Poirier is in there with him, you know, he's familiar with everything. So if you're going to find midseason depth and, and a guy that you might have to play, you know, at, like you said, at a moment's notice, he might be, you know, the third safety this weekend. This is a guy that you don't need to coach up too much. You know, he's been around, he knows the system. So I, it just seemed to make 
a lot of sense, especially for the price too. I mean, if you're going to go find a safety that might have a real impact, you're not getting that for a seventh round pick. And I don't even know if any of those guys are even available right now. So, you know, as much as it's, is it about Poyer? Is it about depth? It might just have been the best option available for the bills. And I think that's how a lot of these things go. Sometimes you look around and, and you know, what do we got? What are our options? Well, Dean Marlowe, we can just drop him right in and play him without having to worry too much. Let's go get that guy. Yeah. I, I'm with that hundred percent on this one. And I I'm wondering how much they sat around after, after the win last weekend and watching the young young safeties who I think everybody has high hopes long term for but get beat deep again that's not mm-hmm. once now that's twice now because remember that Dolphins game right they got beat deep in that one they got beat deep by Rogers in this one I, I think like I said long term I think there are high hopes and I think the ceiling's pretty high for for Jaquan Johnson and, and Hamlin but Having a steady influence, and not only a guy, a veteran um, who knows the system, but almost a calming voice. You know, I mean, if Poyer's dinged up a little bit, having a guy who's been around the league and knows the way Sean runs the ship and the way Leslie likes to do things, it that's a good that's a good addition. And like that said, for peanuts, right? I mean, with the seventh round pick, yeah, okay, great, Atlanta, enjoy. That, that did stand out to me too, Josh, the way that, you know, the, the Packers really hadn't moved the ball too much throughout the game. Then all of a sudden Poyer goes out and we had that exchange of interceptions early in the fourth quarter. After that, the Packers like waltz down the field, 99 yards. I know that the Bills are up three scores and you're not really pressing, but regardless, you know, that, that was eye opening. And then even after that, you know, Green Bay got a, a reasonable field goal try that if they make it, then we're talking about an onside kick. I, I think there is some concern for if the Bills have to go with, Hamlin and Jaquan Johnson long term, you know, what other options do they have? And, and in that case, Marlowe might be a guy that you can turn to again in the short term. Elite stuff, guys. Thank you for coming in uh, in a bind. Uh, check them both out tonight. If you're in Rochester, if you're in uh, if you're in Buffalo, uh, CBS affiliate in both markets. You catch us all on Buffalo Kickoff Live from MetLife Stadium on Sunday. Uh, thanks, boys. No Thanks problem. for coming on, Matt. Appreciate it. Thanks for the money, Ryan Downs. <laughs> awesome, awesome stuff. My guys, Josh Reed and Thad Brown. All right, we're going to bring in my bu- my good buddy, our producer, AJ Chabolski. Did I say it right? Chabolski. Chabolski. I'll get it right one of these times. We'll AJ, right. um, I want you to bring in anything from the, from the chat that you thought that we missed uh, over the course of – the show is going to be a new weekly segment. We get AJ uh, involved in the show. You know, when you're intern, you got to get some clips, man. I mean, that that's that's just the way that it goes. And uh, put some people on to. I know you, you do a Bills podcast as well. Uh, so so some good stuff. Before we get there, though, the the title of this video was you know grades for these trades. And I'm about to publish a story shortly after we're done here, uh, going through each of the moves. And I I, I want to talk through the the grades because I gave the the, the Heinz trade, a B plus. And it, it's for multiple reasons. Number one, I think it gets kind of um, bumped up because you kind of get out of the Zach Moss situation, which I talked about earlier in the show. I think the Bills needed a route out of that situation. And then Heinz comes in and becomes um, a versatile piece that, you know, he's not going to be your starter. You're not going out and trading for, a, you know, a, 70, 80, 90% of the snaps impact player, but he's somebody that's going to probably kind of energize your passing game a little bit, a passing game that already ranks number one in the NFL in yards per game. And then he could potentially return punts for you. And he's been really good in that role over the course of his career. And then obviously with the, the Dean Marlowe deal, a, for all the reasons that the guys were just mentioning, you know, he comes in here already knows the system. His wife already posted who uh, is pregnant uh, with another little baby that they're about to have. And she said she was crying tears of joy and doesn't want to go into labor because of how excited they are to return to Buffalo. And this is a place and a culture that Sean McDermott set that people are excited about coming back uh, and, and being a part of this thing. And as good as the Falcon season is gone, you know, Dean Marlowe to kind of come back to Buffalo, uh, be in a group with, you know, a lot of players that he remembers playing with in this defense and now with Von Miller and Josh Allen being who he is and the Super Bowl potentially, it's got to be really exciting. For him. Yeah, I really uh, – just one thing about the uh, Naeem Hines deal. I think, you know, before the season he mentioned that he has been on the Colts for four years now. 
going on his fifth, and he's had a different quarterback every season. So for mm-hmm. him, I think it's very, you know, pivotal for him to kind of join a, you know, organization where Josh Allen's been around, you know, Ken Dorsey's now taking over. It's kind of probably the same system um, that Dable ran a little, I think a little more downfield passing than we see from Dable, a little more aggressive maybe, but, you know, similar things that um, you see with both offensive coordinators. But, yeah, I just – the Naeem Hines, he will be with a quarterback now that's, you know, been around and, you know, who knows what we do at the end of the season. But, um, you know, it, it's a rental or he's, you know, part of the team for the next couple of years and Singletary probably will have to go. Mm-hmm. You know, interestingly enough, in the immediate, um, you know, plotting this thing out, I think Hines will be active on Sunday because I think they want to get – reps with Josh Allen in game as, as soon as possible to your point uh you know getting used to playing with a new quarterback again as good as Josh Allen is it's going to take some time especially getting in this playbook and the complicated nature that so many players have talked about it being and so you know that could be one of the reasons it's it's taken um James Cook as long as it has to get comfortable and you know Ken was talking a little bit about that yesterday so I think he's active I think Cook probably is active too and they kind of just throw Hines out there in a, in a bunch of different situations or they come up with in practice you know some um you know some specific you know game scenarios where you know they break down his film they find out what he likes to do what he's comfortable in run those plays in practice and then give him a try in the game this is a Jets defense that you know, we're going to get in, into this over the course of the next couple of days. So much fun things to talk about. We've got a show tomorrow, and then we'll probably do a preview show very early Friday, I'm thinking, as soon as Ryan is able. So we'll get back to you on that. Um, <laughs> OT Spears coming in. Bills have no run defense. The blueprint is out. Well, the one thing – the counterpoint to that, my friend, is that it's easy to run against a team that wants you to run. And that's really the thing that I took away from that game. They had no threat with their passing attack. That You knew that they were going to run the ball. It was the same kind of situation with the Patriots last year in the weather game. Like, you know, the Bills, you know, were fine with them running the ball, you know, over the course of the game because it, it added up to how many points at the end. I think it was at 14 or whatever it ended up being. You know, that's the, that's the thing at the end of the day is that can you keep teams from scoring enough points? And I think that was kind of the Bills game plan, especially with their offense scoring like it did. Um, go ahead, AJ. Yeah, just – yeah, you mentioned that. Like, I think that was the first time in the McDermott era where you really saw his defense and the whole team still be in control of the game where the offense – the defense was kind of giving up, giving up a lot of running yards, rushing yards. I think you go back to the Indianapolis Colts game last year with Jonathan Taylor. You know, we weren't not in, con- in control of that game ever throughout the whole game. I, I felt like it was never, you know, our game to win. And then you go back to the, you know, Derrick Henry uh, Derrick Henry game when he ran all over us. So th- that was the first time for McDermott, you know, that we invited them to run and we still had control of that whole game. And when you're up 17 in the third and fourth quarter and it's taken, you know, seven, eight minutes to drive down the field and you're still not allowing points off that, I'll take that any day of the week. All right. Um, speaking of taking it any day of the week, I will take a uh, deal over at Tops Friendly Markets, and they got a bunch of them right now. Go visit their uh, carryout cafe. They'll get you hooked up for game day, your tailgating spread, whatever you need. Hot to go, fresh, large cheese and pepperoni pizzas, $14. Jumbo chicken wings, 10 count, $14. The legendary breakfast pizza, 20 bucks. Pizza or taco log, six count, seven sixty nine. dollars Baby back rib sections, $5.99 a pound, plus sub sandwiches, wraps, apps, sides, and so much more. Visit tossmarkets.com slash red zone for the complete menu of ready to enjoy fan favorites. Uh, AJ, um, say the last name again. I got to say it a lot in a lot of different times. Sabalski. Sabalski. I need like a, uh, you know, a, a, like a, a us there. phonetic. <laughs> yeah, I, I need a phonetic uh, uh, explanation for me to remember how to say it. Uh, no, yeah. I'll get it one of these times. And it's becoming a bet, so it's kind of fun. Um 325 people watching live on a Tuesday night, impromptu emergency pod, if you will. Thank you so much. Like this video, subscribe as well. It really helps us out. Uh, Ryan will be back tomorrow. AJ will be back in the producer box. We'll get him in for this segment uh, in in another show. And uh, have a great night, everybody. Take care.